And there are also mounting fears of an escalation in the conflict on Israel's border with Lebanon. Lebanese officials say four civilians, including three children, have been killed in an Israeli airstrike near the southern town of Ainata. The Israeli military says it is examining the incident. Lebanon's Hezbollah militant group has responded by firing rockets at the northern Israeli town of Kiryat Shmona. Let's speak to DW's special correspondent, uh, Amian Isif, joining me from the Lebanese capital, Beirut. Amian, uh, Lebanese officials have said that four Lebanese civilians have been killed in an Israeli airstrike. What more can you tell us? Well, authorities in Lebanon say that this was a strike from an Israeli drone. It seems like it was a direct hit on this car that was carrying uh, three young girls aged 10, 12, and 14, uh, their mother and their grandmother. The grandmother also died, as well as these three children. The mother uh, was uh, severely injured, but she was pulled alive from the, from the car by her brother. He was a Lebanese journalist who was driving in front of that car in a sort of caravan, uh, he said that uh, there was no other possible targets for Israel in the area, and a lot of Lebanese are speculating that he was himself the target. He, um, uh, Israel has also killed a Lebanese jur journalist very early on in this uh, latest conflict. Hezbollah, the militant group, which is backed by Iran and basically controls the south of Lebanon, said that it is going to, uh, that it has retaliated, um, killing one Israeli, but no word yet if that is a civilian or uh, military personnel. Now, these incidents sound certain to raise tensions. Um, are there signs of further escalation in the conflict on Israel's border with Lebanon? Well, the Lebanese government seems to be going the official route. They said they're lodging a complaint, an urgent complaint to the UN against this strike on a civilian target by the Israeli military. But don't forget that it's not the, Israel, uh, not the Lebanese government that has control in the south, but rather uh, Hezbollah, which is the largest party, but it's backed by an Iran and, and operates somewhat autonomously in the region there. Uh, they said that Israel has to pay the price for this attack, and we have to see in the next few days what exactly they mean by that. Now, the leader of Hezbollah, um, uh, Hassan Nasrallah, said last week basically that he doesn't uh, intend to change the status quo, that all of the actions there are uh, being calculated. But one wild card here is the presence of Hamas in Lebanon. Now, Hamas is a Palestinian party. It doesn't have that much power in Lebanon, but there are 250,000 Palestinian refugees living in Lebanon. And since the uh, terror attacks on October 7th and uh, the resulting attack on Gaza, which has killed thousands of civilians, Hamas has started to gain a lot more popularity among these Palestinians. I went to one of the large refugee camps here just south of Beirut, and you can hear what they told me. Crossing into Burj al Barajni Palestinian refugee camp, giants of the Palestinian cause watch over you. Some say that 20,000 people live here in less than two square kilometers. That would make it as dense as Gaza City. The similarities between the two places are hard to miss. Makeshift blockhouses, narrow streets, UN facilities providing aid. Every street here is strung with this mass of wires and water pipes. They were actually built by the residents themselves with the help of aid organizations. That's because this camp isn't serviced or inspected by Lebanese authorities. It's kind of a world apart, a little Palestine, where residents are basically sitting and waiting to go back to their original homelands. Deep inside the maze of streets, we meet an elderly woman who was born in Tarshia in present-day Israel, but was forced to flee in 1948 when she was just two years old. She's lived her whole life as a refugee. In recent weeks, she's done little but watch the news and grieve. I've been watching from the first day. Of course I have. It's my family and my friends. Of course I've been watching, my dear. May Muhammad protect all of the people of Gaza. And with the help of Muhammad, we'll all return to our country. <laughs> the militant group Hamas has never had much of a foothold here in Burj al Barajni, but its name has appeared scribbled on walls in recent weeks. 
Some people celebrated Hamas terror attacks on October 7th in these streets. Now they're furious at the Israeli response. Imad was born here. He got a degree in business management in Beirut. But because he's a refugee, he's barred from most jobs outside the camp. So he sells flavored ice from a motorbike. I do feel a very strong connection with Gaza. I feel like one of them. When I see a building collapsing or a child dying, I get goosebumps and I feel anxious and angry about it. So if a war starts in Lebanon, I would join the resistance to defend Palestine. My family and my kids are not better than the ones dying in Gaza. I ask him if he condones Hamas's killing of over 1,000 Israeli civilians in October. He denies without evidence that they were the targets of the attacks. There's an increase in violent anti-Israel sentiment here as the news of civilian deaths in Gaza plays on TVs across the camp. But at the same time, there's a growing fear of what might happen if Hamas and its allies were to draw Israel into a wider war. The Palestinian guys, if you see here in the camp, like my brother or my men cousins, they are able to have a gun and go to the borders to, to, to kill the Israeli. And this is our land and we want it back. Do you think that it's wise to not provoke Israel so that Lebanon stays out of the war? As you see, the building in the camp, they are not well maintained. They are not, so uh, it's one uh, bomb. Uh, they will let the camp fall down, so I will die. So for sure, I, w I, I don't want uh, war. And I think no one in Lebanon wants war. And we don't also want peace with Israel. So that's it. Dreading war, unwilling to accept peace. It's a contradiction that runs through this camp. I mean, thank you for that report. And we saw there those examples of support for Hamas within that refugee camp. I'm curious whether you felt that Hamas is gaining more of a foothold in Lebanon as a result of the war. I don't know if it is gaining a permanent foothold. Uh, that is to say that Fatah is still the dominant political uh, of power in these refugee camps. Don't forget Fatah is a uh, more moderate uh, Palestinian party, secular, uh, believes in a two-state solution. This is what Mahmoud Abbas is from. Uh, so this still remains in power there. Uh, and Hamas doesn't really have a foothold in that sense. But in terms of popularity, they've certainly grown a lot more more popular since October 7th. You saw the celebrations in the streets there and a lot of people grieving what's happening in Gaza now with the Israeli bombardments. There's been a kind of radicalization going on. You could see playing, there's news playing on TVs in almost every corner nonstop. And they're getting a kind of filtered version of what's happened, uh, especially on October 7th. People I talked to denied that civilians uh, were the targets of the Hamas terror attacks because they're getting videos that uh, don't explicitly show that. Um, that isn't to deny that there is a certain violence, a swell up of violence in these Palestinian refugee camps. A lot of people there uh, uh, have the feeling that something has to change. Don't forget that we're almost in the fourth generation of refugees has been living in Lebanon uh, as refugees, meaning they can't really work in most jobs. They're contained to these camps for four generations without prospects of a future. And for a lot of them, uh, having a two-state solution or going back to uh, their grandparents' homelands is an existential question for them. And so in a very tragic way, any kind of movement on uh, the uh, Palestinian-Israeli question is uh, some kind of hope for them. And uh, they see that in what is happening uh, in, the, in the region right now, despite how tragic it is. Uh, mm. So I wouldn't say that Hamas has a foothold necessarily, but certainly people are watching this and saying perhaps something is moving now, despite all the violence that is going on. Amian, thank you so much for your insights. That's DW's correspondent Amian Isef reporting from Beirut.